everyone, welcome back to the next public office hours of the Kubernetes Monitoring Helm chart. Uh, we're excited that you're here. Uh, we've got a really cool one today. Uh, so today is January 24th. Um, and the big news is that we released the Kubernetes Monitoring version V2. Uh, that happened uh, a week or so ago. Um, if you've seen the, any of the other office hours, you know that this has been coming for a long time and uh, we finally got it released into the public. And so I'm very excited about that. It comes with a ton of really cool features. If you're really curious about what are the differences between V1 and V2, we've got some content on the previous office hours. You can take a look at it there. Otherwise, find me on the Grafana public Slack. There's a link at the end I'll show you. Um, and uh, you can always ask there. Um, but that's really exciting. So in today's office hours, uh, I want to talk about the V2 release, how that went, uh, what are some of the things that we've been doing actually since the V2 release was done. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the next big release, so 2.1. Uh, what's what are, what, we're, what are we looking to include in that, uh, and um, and you know talk more about that. Um, and as always, have some time at the end for Q and A. Um, feel free if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to unmute and ask um, if you have anything. Uh, to, uh, to ask. So yeah, Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart V2. Uh, it's really exciting. I'm really glad that uh, we actually got it through. So we released it on January 20, or January 7th. Um, and we've had a lot of people already start using it, uh, giving us some great feedback. Um, we've actually, we're up to 2.0.4 already, and I'm planning on releasing 2.0.5. Um, and hopefully that uh, shows that we're really committed to making sure that, you know, feedback that we received, issues that are reported, even nice to haves, uh, we listen to those things that helps really drive the roadmap uh, and the features and the even just little nice to haves like, you know, setting namespaces instead of having to apply rules and things like that. Um, let us know. That's what really drives the development of this project. Uh, and so 2.0.4, we've done a lot since the 2.0.0 the release on January 7th. Some of the patch releases have made things like all the job labels or many of the job labels that we uh, set within the Helm chart are now configurable. It makes it more flexible for the different visualizations. If you've got different dashboards that rely on those job labels being a certain thing, um, this lets you adjust things to match your environment. Uh, we've, we're adding, this one's uh, hopefully will be released today. We're adding more components to the application observability feature chain, including the interval processor, which can kind of like uh, latch all of the flow of the telemetry data onto certain intervals so that uh, it kind of matches the, the DPM of like the metrics that you get from the Prometheus style scraping. Uh, we're adding the spa, span logs and span metrics connectors. So we can generate logs and metrics based on the trace spans that are coming in through your application data. So that's a really cool feature that's coming in. We've been adding lots of examples. Uh, and most of the examples that we add into our documentation, we also back with an additional automated test. So not only are there these examples that are beneficial for you and the community to learn how do you actually integrate this Helm chart with different, uh, different environments or different deployment patterns, uh, but we're ex exercising the Helm chart automatically with these sorts of things. So one example is a sharded kube state metrics. What in the world does that mean? So kube state metrics is the system that, that gets deployed onto the cluster. Uh, the Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart itself does the deployment of kube state metrics. What it does, it looks at all of the objects that are in the cluster. And this is pods, this is daemon sets, deployments, services, config maps, secrets, everything. Uh, and kube state metrics generates metrics based on all of this information. Uh, it generates metrics like kube node info, kube pod info, uh, the number of replicas you want your deployment to have, the number of replicas that your deployment has, it's the number that are running. Um, and so that's extremely useful for building the Kubernetes monitoring experience in Grafana Cloud or any dashboards that you have that try to understand the state of your Kubernetes cluster and the objects running inside of it at a given time. Kube state metrics is amazing. Um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, a sharded kube state metrics means multiple replicas that all split the responsibility across the different replicas of kube state metrics. By default, it deploys with a single pod deployment. By enabling sharding, you split that over multiple replicas and it turns into a stateful set. Um, and why would you want to do this? Well, just like anything, when the cluster becomes very large, Kube state metrics itself can get behind on being able to accumulate all of this data within the typical 60 second scrape interval. 
So when you get a very, very large Kubernetes cluster, either by nodes or by number of pods, um, just uh, splitting out your kube state metrics into multiple shards can be helpful. And so you then have to, the alloy that's scraping the metrics has to then talk to each of the individual shards to get the full context of, of, uh, of the entire cluster. Sounds complicated, I understand. Don't worry, we've got an example now. Um, and so we're showing how you can deploy kube state metrics with the sharding, as well as how you scrape that properly. Um, Istio service mesh, uh, this is another example that got added. So Istio service mesh, specifically using the sidecar pattern, uh, how do we deploy the alloy instances that can handle that sort of system? Um, and, uh, and we're deploying an auto test with that too. So Istio service mesh sets up a lot of pod to pod networking. Um, things like mutual TLS and things like that. Um, sometimes that can cause conflicts with the systems that are trying to talk to each other or trying to discover each other. Uh, and so we added this to try and help understand how do you set things up so that it can uh, it can tolerate in that environment. Uh, and I see Carl's here, so thank you, Carl, for bringing that one up. Um, I appreciate uh, the feedback on that one. Um, also, the patch releases that we've released since 2.0.0, we've added a lot of things to help with troubleshooting understanding where your high cardinality or uh, high DPMs are coming from. So hopefully we can help resolve those things faster. And then just like every patch release, lots of stability improvements, lots of reliability improvements, uh, finding ways to remove uh, metric duplications, things like that. So there's been a lot of work on 2.0 uh, and a lot more coming. Um, I, I Speaking of a lot more coming, I know that there's a new version of Alloy that's out. Um, I'm going to try and get that released into the Kate's Monitoring Home Chart today. Sip a coffee to buy some time. <laughs> um, so 2.1, what does 2.1 look like? And I want to say uh, early on, I want to talk about what do we think about when we're thinking about a 2.1. The Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart roughly follows Semver rules. So I mean roughly, we're not very super strict about it where only new features come in minor releases, only patch releases have bugs. But this is kind of what I think about when I think about the, the versioning for this. Major releases like we just did from a 1.x to a 2.0 are architectural level changes, um, things where it's going to take a lot of effort to go from the old style to the new style. And, and, you know, we'll do tooling like migration tooling or documentation to help you with that. Um, this could be large breaking changes, um, or like I said, architectural level features. So changing how the system actually works. Um, and so we promise we won't do anything like that until a 3.0. And that's not even in my mind at the moment. Uh, minor releases, so you know, 2.0 to 2.1, what we're thinking about there are large feature releases, so a substantial improvement in something and how, how the Helm chart functions or, or a very new feature that you was not able to be done before. Um, in 2.1, I'm allowing ourselves to have some maybe minor breaks or deprecations, but this will be like we change the wording on one thing and either we'll tolerate it and just handle it for you, or like if any if you've used the 2.0 help chart, you know that if there's any misconfiguration, we'll try to let you know what needs to be changed. So things like that. Um, if there's anything that does need to be changed, we'll do, give you the exact language on, please change your values file from this style to this style. Um, and then the patch releases, the double dot releases, uh, no breaking changes in those. Most of the time it will be dependency updates or uh, bug fixes. Um, maybe minor improvements or minor features, things along the lines of we added the ability to set a namespace and it automatically generates this outlaw rule. So I'm not reserving patch releases only for bug fixes and patches, um, but, uh, but minor content upgrades. All right, so with all of this, you know, why am I preambling this? Talk about 2.1. With 2.1, we have some larger features that we have planned. Um, and note the asterisk down there. This is not a commitment, but we're just trying to be open sharing what we have planned in our roadmap. Uh, 2.1, I've talked about this a lot, tail sampling. I'm really excited about this one. This has been something that we've been hearing about for a long time. People want to set up an entire observability pipeline that gets your application data that also includes tail sampling before being delivered to your databases, either Grafana Cloud or to Grafana Enterprise or you know some other database provider. Tail sampling will be baked into the Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart. 
Uh, it will rely on additional alloy deployments to do this, but I'm really excited that uh, you know we have the expertise to handle that properly. Um, other features that we're looking into, service graph metrics, just like tail sampling, this requires kind of a special handling and deployment of alloy to handle the whole flow of data through things. Um, but when we're doing tail sampling, we can explore things like service graph metrics uh, to do that. I've mentioned new alloy instances multiple times. And if you look at the 2.0 values file, you'll know that uh, the large majority of it is spent defining your alloy instances. What I'd love to explore, and this is a little bit more on the experimental side, but a way to dynamically deploy the alloy instances, kind of like what we're doing for destinations, um, where you get to be in more control about what gets deployed with your alloy instances, um, it's less of a static definition of those things. Um, and then finally, I'd love to see more and more service integrations. We have uh, six or seven at the moment, and we're getting more and more over time, but I'd love to see that number really grow uh, to make it easy to add additional metrics, scraping and log handling for services that are on your clusters uh, in a way that makes it easy to define and you're not handling custom config all of the time. One of the big things that was really an important driver for originally for the Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart is let's bundle all of this config into the chart so that as the best practices updates, then it's just a Helm upgrade away to get improved config. And the current pattern of using extra config really works fine, but it doesn't benefit from the ability to upgrade things. So, so adding more and more service integrations I see as the way to uh, kind of durably upgrade service integrations and configuration over time uh, in a way that makes it actually a lot easier for, for you, the people using this chart. Um, just like 2.0, you're going to get used to seeing this date TBD. I don't know when this is going to be released. Um, we're looking at the planning for this now uh, as things evolve, you know, hear about it in upcoming office hours. Uh, any questions about what we've got going for 2.1 before I hit the next thing? Great, awesome. Um, so that was my last of the main content. Uh, now it's time for just open Q&A. If you have any questions about the Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart, about the project, about the roadmap, uh, feel free to fire away. Um, one thing that I'll tell you that I am working on uh, today is if you're using, if you are a Grafana Cloud user, a Grafana Cloud customer, um, I am working on updating the config page for the, the in the UI to utilize the v2 version of the helm chart um, right now it's pinned to v1 i'm working on the v2 version of that right now so that should hopefully be released within the next week or so uh, but yeah any other questions uh yeah i have one about the auto discovery yeah uh, i am in version one still trying to upgrade my dev environment to version two but in version one there is the Auto under the auto discovery in the default values file, there are annotations defined per each type for scrape. What should be the annotation that it will yep. search in the pods or services? Yeah, and I see it moved to feature auto discovery in version two. Yep. But the the thing is, we have a situation like in the past, we were using the Prometheus.io annotations, mm -hmm. and then we start to use. Grafana flow and change it to monitor agent Grafana kind of the one introduced by yeah. Grafana flow. And now yeah. we have a mixture, <laughs> some yeah. uh, community applications uh, deployed uses Prometheus.io and they don't have any way to uh, modify it. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our in-house have the old Grafana flow type annotations. And now if I, Reshuffle again for that. Uh, the the engineering team will kill me, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah, right. Uh, and there are some applications that they don't allow to change that annotation yeah. uh, okay. for me. Can it be? Uh, as far as I see from the uh, templates, it doesn't use any kind of regular expression or what. I was thinking like. I may define, for for example, for scrape, 
k8s.grafana.com slash scrape or the prometheus.io slash scrape kind of thing. Right. Okay. Is, is yeah, that possible so right now, right? What you're asking, so you have pods and services that have two different kinds of annotations to, to auto discover yeah. them. And you're, yeah. you're seeing like, yeah, so currently we, we can't handle two different styles of annotation. That's a really great question though. Let me, um, do me a favor, uh, open an issue on the Kubernetes monitoring Helm chart GitHub repository. Do you have a link to yeah. that? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Open an issue there. Uh, let me know that you'd love to be able to have multiple different styles of Prometheus, uh, the auto discovery, uh, annotations. Yeah. Yeah, and I will. I will do. We'll explore some options there. Um, I think there's probably some things that we can do to to make that work. But that's a that's a good question. Okay, thank you. I will do that. Awesome, thank you. Hey Pete, for the uh, service integrations, is that like the core DNS thing and some other things yep. like that? Okay, yep. cool. So that's the, the the what's called the integrations feature. Uh, it's what's got like Cert Manager and NCD now. Core DNS would fit into that definitely. Yeah. All right, cool. Because I noticed there's like a kube DNS, but that doesn't satisfy the requirements of the core DNS integration page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The kube DNS, it, there's it's where it starts to blur the lines between what's, you know, what's quote unquote control plane monitoring and what's just the core DNS service. Um yeah, I'll take a look at that, but uh definitely I want to get the ability to get core DNS and light up the full integration on Grafana Cloud to make that work. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, good question. Right on. Robbie, do you want to unmute and say hi? And I'll I'll intro you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Pete. So um, hello, everyone. My name's Robbie. I'm a software engineer here at Grafana as well, and I'm actually going to join Pete uh, as a core contributor um, with the Kate's monitoring chart. So uh, really hoping to provide him some support. Uh, previously worked on some of the tail sampling stuff and uh, early iteration of a tail, um, tail sampling implementation at Grafana, which included a Helm chart as well. Um, so yeah, looking forward to uh, being part of the team here. Yep. I'm really thrilled that Robbie's joining uh, and adding on to, as a core contributor to the team. Um, you know, this there's been a lot of excitement around this Helm chart, and so I'm glad that uh, that we're adding more development talent to it. Um, I've worked with him in the past. He's an amazing engineer. I think we're going to have a great time getting you know even more goodness added into this Helm chart. So yeah, excited to have you aboard. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll get it wrapped. Thanks for all your hard work. No, thanks, Carl. I appreciate yeah, definitely. it. Definitely. All right. So, yeah, if you have, if you think of more questions, if you want to interact with us, you can always find us on the public Grafana Slack, grafana.slack.com, where we're lurking in the Kubernetes channel there. Um, otherwise, you can find us on the, our GitHub repository, Grafana slash Kubernetes Monitoring Helm. Uh, we, like I said at the beginning, this project is driven a lot by community feedback and um, the things that are really important and resonate to you. So uh, find us, interact with us, uh, open issues, um, and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm grateful that you came and that uh, we can get you know make this cool stuff work together. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye. Thanks you too. Bye bye.